There are two ayat of Surah An-Nisa that I'd like to share with you today. And in one of them, Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a sense of priority of the kinds of sins that we should stay away from. Often, there are, there's a, a lack of understanding of the kinds of uh, sense of proportion in the life of a Muslim. There are some priorities that are more important than others. Your prayer is more important than some other things. There are other aspects of our, of our Islam that make your Islam more beautiful. They're preferred acts, but they don't come nearly to the status of the prayer. Similarly, when it comes to sins or shortcomings, there are things that we should do. Of course, you should try to enter your home with your right foot and when you go to the restroom, enter with your left foot and say certain adhkar and these are things you should try to do. And ignoring them is somewhat problematic, but then there are things that are major sins. And often what happens when people have a confused or a distorted sense of proportion is that they take care of the small things. They're very careful about the smaller details. I'm following this particular sunnah. I'm making sure that I did this dhikr. I made sure that, for example, it's, to, it's Friday today, so I recited my surah al-kahf, etc., etc. So they take care of these small things. But at the same time, they ignore the gigantic major sins that are right there in their face and they're doing them without even thinking about them. That may have to do with maybe earning income in an impermissible way. That may have to do with a major sin like zina. That may have to do you know, with a major sin like riba and things like that. Some big, big evil sins are right there in your face and you're blind to them as though you're not even doing them. But this other smaller stuff you're doing, making yourself feel better that you're practicing the religion. Which is why the Qur'an actually gives us a clear sense of proportion. What Allah says in this ayah is, إِن تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ If you were to avoid and make great effort to avoid the major, the, the grievous portions of the kinds of things that you have been forbidden from. So there's stuff you're forbidden to do, but there's some pretty serious stuff that you all know that you're not supposed to do. If you can manage staying away from that stuff, then as for the lesser shortcomings, نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ will bury away the re remaining sins of yours. Meaning take care of the serious matters first, take care especially what the Qur'an will highlight money matters, how we make money and how we spend money. That's a pretty serious issue. Taking care of the rights of the people around us, from everyone within the family, to extend it in the community, people like the orphan or the poor, etc. Taking care of them and not, you know, فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ Those are big kinds of sins. Then in the way that we conduct our business, transactions when you owe somebody money, when you got paid to fulfill a contract, when you were paid to provide a service, the honesty that you do at your job, those are pretty big, heavy items. Similarly, the engagement in one of the greatest crimes mentioned in the Qur'an financially, riba, is a pretty big thing. Similarly, when it comes to our chastity, things like zina, you know, is a major, major thing. So, so major that Allah says, don't even go close to it. لا تقربوا zina. Take care of those things, and yes, you will for, fall short in some other things. Maybe your salah didn't have perfect khushur. Maybe your wudu wasn't amazing. You missed a drop or two here and there. Maybe that happened. Maybe the way, maybe when you were reciting Quran or when you were praying, your mind was elsewhere. You know, maybe when you went to do Hajj or Umrah, uh, you know, you you overlooked certain rituals or you didn't do the best. Maybe you lost your patience every once in a while. Maybe some things like that happened. Those things will be compensated for because you're taking care of the major obligations and staying away from major, major sins. That's a sense of proportion that the Qur'an promotes. But what's remarkable to me about this ayah isn't just that Allah Azza wa says that He will overlook those sins. You know, we're, we get often embarrassed about those sins and those shortcomings. Allah adds, وَنُدْخِلْكُمْ مُدْخَلًا karima." I will enter you into a graceful entry. In other words, those small errors and shortcomings are not going to be highlighted. You are going to be dignified and honored and those things are, you know, those embarrassing mishaps are going to be almost erased from your record or sponged from your record. So you're not humiliated when you come before Allah. You'll be given a dignified entry. But what's remarkable to me about these ayat in addition is that the ayat right before this one spoke about some major sins like cheating in business and murder. And the ayat about after this one, even more remarkably, the one that I really wanted to share with you today, is actually about one of the major root causes of some very serious sins in life. Allah Azza wa says, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضِ Don't wish 
what the, you, and don't wish for the kinds of favor and the kinds of preference Allah has given some people over other people. So what happens to you and I is we see somebody that has more money than we do. They have better appearance than we do. They have a nicer car than we do. They have a better maybe married life than we do. Maybe they have, you know, better. Some, some, sometimes I've even heard even among siblings, my sister has better complexion than I do. She's more beautiful than I am. Uh, jealousy can take many forms. You could just envy somebody for what they have and become obsessed with why you don't have it. And it consumes you. And it could be the smallest thing, it could be the biggest thing. You know, it could be things like money and material things, it could be immaterial things, it could be even the, the love of a father or the love of a mother. Why does dad love this one so much? I never get that kind of attention. You know, she never blames him, she always blames me. She gets mad at me, but she's always nice to her. You know, there could be this, this kind of thing happens among siblings, you know. And parents sometimes don't help because they keep reminding one of them, he's smarter, why can't you be more like him? And, you know, create that jealousy even more inside a family. Allah Azza wa Jalla started here by saying, don't wish for what other people have been given by Allah Himself. There are preferences. In fact, there are people better looking than you and me. There are people smarter than us. There are people that are more knowledgeable. There are people that make more money. There are people in your family that get more appreciation than you do. It's a fact. That's just a fact. And sometimes it's clearly unfair. But in some of those things, it's simply Allah has opened a door of risk for them that He didn't open for you. And He opened other doors for you. But what happens for you is, you want the same things that somebody else has. Allah did not make you the same as anyone else. And Allah did not open the doors of provision, of risk for you that He opened for other people. Each of us has a unique set of opportunities. And we're gonna have to work hard to earn Allah's favor from within whatever we've been given, not comparing ourselves to anybody else. Before I get to the rest of this ayah and the positive reinforcement inside of this ayah, I want to share with you why this is a root cause for many major sins. As a matter of fact, the first grievous you know, rebellion against Allah that we know of in recorded history is the rebellion of Iblis, which is rooted in jealousy. That started, why, why does he get the attention? Wait, he's just made of clay. That's where that started. The first crime that ever took place on the earth, when humanity came on this earth, is the killing of Habil by his brother Qabil. That's also a matter of jealousy. This jealousy can be so heinous and so ugly, that even when you are the son of a prophet named Yaqub and your brother himself is a remarkable child, who even if you don't know he has is not a prophet yet, has prophetic qualities. It can lead you to the point where you're even willing to kill your brother. What I'm trying to get at is jealousy and envy are not to be underestimated. They may seem like something going on inside of you or inside of me. It's just a feeling that I have. It's just an itch that I have. Literally, by the way, al-hasad is actually al-qishr, literally a peel and a scratch. They describe it as, a, as, a, as a, an insatiable itch inside of the heart like when some locust or bug bites your skin and you want to just keep scraping it. That it's, a, it's this, and the more you scrape it, the worse it, get, the worse it gets. You're just supposed to ignore it and let it pass. The feeling may come, but you have to let it pass. That's actually what hasad is. You know, Al-Hasan rahimahullah ta'ala anhu said that I've never seen anybody who's a wrongdoer that looks more like the victim than someone who's jealous. You know, someone who's a wrongdoer has a victim. But in this case, the wrongdoer is the victim. That's what he says. He's the wrongdoer, he's doing jealousy, but he's the victim himself. This is why in one of the remarkable surahs of seeking Allah's protection, we seek protection of someone who acts jealously. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ we, we, ask for, we ask refuge from the evil of the one who's envious, especially at the time that he's demonstrating his or her envy at that very moment. It's a very, very serious thing. It can lead to some very serious problems in my life and in yours. And I want to just count for myself and maybe refresh in my mind what kinds of blessings I may deprive myself of when I become a victim of jealousy. When I myself can't stop thinking about what somebody else has or what I wish somebody else had. And specific, just to be clear, it's actually tamanni zawal ni'ma li dunihi. You wish that somebody else no longer had it. 
You don't just wish, okay, this one is so, you know, so strong, I wish I was that strong. No, 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 no. I wish they get sick and I get strong. You, you want them to not have it anymore. Why do they have it? Why did they, I, I hope he gets fired. Not only, okay, he got a promotion, I hope I get a promotion one day. No, no, no. I hope he gets fired and I get a promotion. That's hasad. You want them to, you want to see them fail. Something in you just desires to see them come down. Which it adds to your rizq in nothing. It doesn't add anything for you. But somehow inside of you, there's this feeling that if you can see them fail, or if you can see them suffer, it will make you feel better some, in some way.